Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. Yes. Let's talk with a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the name of Son Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Lord. Father God, we just thank you, Father, for your awesome power, Father God, for raising us up and allowing us to see another day, Lord. Father God, we ask you, Father, for your kingdom power that you keep us, Father God, as we travel from one destination to the next, and as we dwell in our homes, Father God. Lord, we ask you, God, that you will continue to work on us and work through us, Lord Father. Develop us to be the true Christians that you would want us to be, Father God. Lord, help us to be more like you and less fleshly, Lord. Help us to show your love abroad to whomever we meet, Lord. Father God, we ask you, Father, continue to work on us and guide our footsteps, Father God. And Lord, give us wisdom to do what you called us to do, Father God. Wisdom to follow your way, Father God, and to handle various situations in our lives, Lord. And Lord, help us to be obedient to the wisdom that you give us. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father God, that you will watch over all those under the sound of voice, Father, that may be going through any kind of illness, Father God, any kind of um, stress, any kind of financial strains, Father God. We all stand in need of a blessing, Lord. So, Father God, we just present them to you as well, Father God. But you know what each and every person stands in need of, Lord. You know who needs to be saved. And, Lord, anyone who needs to be saved, Father God, we just pray that this word would reach their hearts, Father God. Touch them and want to be saved and know who you are, Father God. And, Lord, those who are saved, Father God, help us to walk in your calling, Lord. Help us, Father God, to seek your word for what you want us to do, Father, and for deliverance, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We had a good Sunday school class this morning. Yes. I pray that you were able to join us this morning. Our Sunday school lesson was actually taught by Pastor Thornton of Fellowship Baptist Church. Um, Fellowship Baptist Church and Kingdom Praise combined um, each Sunday for Sunday school. And today's lesson was called Faith and Transformation. The devotional reading came from Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 17 to 21. And the background scripture as well as the lesson came from Romans 12, verses 3 to 8. And I encourage you to read the entire book of Romans because most of us are familiar with the first two chapters where we put in our bodies to Christ, you know, offer ourselves a sacrifice. But he goes on and he talks about how we're supposed to do that. Um, read the entire book of Romans because Romans, the first 11 chapters, actually tells you about salvation. And God lets us know that salvation is for everyone. And then from chapter 12 on out, he tells us of how we to put that doctrine into practice, how we're supposed to live. And one of the things our lesson touched on today was talking about the spiritual gifts. Once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, everybody's given a spiritual gift. It's up to us to find out what that gift is and ask for God's help for to, live, to develop in that gift. But the gift that you have, Don, will help me and the gifts that I have will help you. But in order to make us whole as a family, Everybody needs to be walking the call that God gave them. Okay? Mm-hmm. And not shy away from it. <laughs> and not allow fear to keep you bondage. Because we need one another. So when you get an opportunity, go back and look at the Sunday School lesson. Um, it will be posted on Facebook as well as YouTube. And if you have any questions, please reach out to um, either Fellowship Baptist Church or, or King of Praise. And we'll address those questions. Next week's lesson is going to be taught by Dr. Thompson, Perkins Square Baptist Church. And she was, she'll be speaking on faith in the power of God. The devotional reading comes from Romans chapter 4, verses 9 to 22. And the background scripture and the lesson is going to come from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 31. So please um, read up, be prepared for next week's lesson. And you can actually participate on the lesson by Zoom, and that information should be on our page. Or you may participate by Facebook or at a later date for it up on YouTube. We want to thank everyone who came out and helped us yesterday with the outreach ministry. We gave out a lot of um, clothing, poetry, um, a lot of food. Um, people stand in the need of, of certain things. So those who were able to come out to assist us yesterday, we really thank you for your support. And those who stayed behind but was praying for us, we also thank you for your prayers because we always stayed in need of prayers. 
Our next outreach is going to be the fourth Saturday in February, which is February the 23rd. February the 23rd will be at Fay and the Front Street at 7.30 a.m. We want to be setting up so by 8 o'clock we'll be ready to serve the community. And um, we'll be at, it's right in front of St. Paul de Vincent Beth, um, Beth Lutheran Church, Catholic Church, Catholic Church. So if you can come out to support us, we we'll appreciate it. We do stand in need as always. Um, the men are always looking for undergarments, all sizes. The popular size is medium. Um, we did give out a lot of blankets this time. So next year, next month will be February. So it's still going to be cold. So there's still going to be hat gloves, scarves. We didn't have a lot of coats and jackets, but what we had, we gave out all the stuff for one. Um, so anything that you can um, donate, like you worn clothes, would be appreciative for those who are needed. <coughs> Thursday night, Padel Bible study by Facebook. Bible study starts at 7 o'clock p.m. every Thursday night, unless I'm um, told otherwise. So this Thursday, Bible study, 7 o'clock, and we're normally finished by 7.45. Pastor Eckers like to hold tight to the time so that you'll know exactly how much time you're going to be online. Okay. There is a word from the Lord today. Amen. <clears throat> One of our associate ministers will be speaking today. Reverend Michael Alfonso Eccles Jr. And as you're looking through, um, as you prepare and start searching out for 2 Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 10. Immediately after the reading of the word, we have Minister Basha Eccles come up with a Simonis lecture, and then Minister Eccles Jr. will present the word. All right, are we ready? Are we yes. ready for a word? Yes. Are we ready for a word? Yes. Alright. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. And I'm going to be reading from the New um, Living Translation. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there were false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the solvent lords who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into the dispute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on his unguarded people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. If he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by filthy lives of lawless men, for their righteous men, living among them day by day, was tormented in their righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, <coughs> then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desires of the sinful nature and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid to slander celestial beings. That's the first 10 verses of 2 Peter chapter 2. The word for the dead, be weary of false teachers. <coughs> praise the Lord, family. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. I said praise the Lord, family. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. It's a little gloomy outside, but we're not going to be gloomy in here, amen. 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 No matter what we go through, we all need to give the Lord our total praise. So just stand on your feet and give the Lord some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 I'm going to sing this song that was put on my heart this week. And if you know it, like I, I always say, y'all are welcome to sing along with me. 
Second Peter chapter two verses one through ten. Starting with verse one. But there were all I'm reading from the NIV version. It was read from the King James before. But this is the NIV. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there were false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereignty of the Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction to themselves. 
many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring way of truth distribute. Um, so this is simply saying we got to watch what we listen to. Um, be weary of people that are not speaking actual doctrine. Um, I don't want to say all television um, preachers are not of God, but a lot of times you'll see that they give a lot of hoop and holler. They give a lot of um, presentation, a lot of um, verbal gymnastics. Um, but are they really in the Word? Um, that's what you really, really want to pay attention to. Are they actually coming from the Bible themselves? It's not what a man says, it's what God said. And that's what we're, as ministers, that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to present a word from God. Um, I don't want to say all television, uh, all love, but if they're asking for a donation, uh, for a, a, a payment for a prayer, for a prayer a payment for a blessing, that is not of God. God is not a genie. Um, God is not a piggy bank that you just throw money at and help, help you get some kind of interest out of it. Um, yeah, I believe in paying my tithes, but I give tithes because I was already given, but I was blessed, so I should be a blesser. Um, just as Jesus, he came to this earth completely selflessly. He didn't have to leave heaven to come down here to spend time with us, but he came so we could have eternal life with him. And that, that's the same kind of life that we should be living out. We're supposed to be living by his example. Um, the life where we're, we should be willing to die for one another. That's what real love is. And we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. If people simply listen to that one commandment, love thy neighbor as you love yourself, would there be any hunger? Would there be any homelessness? Would there be any hate? We will all be in love because we want to love one ourselves. That's the one thing that our society teaches nowadays is to love ourselves. Uh, follow your heart. But the, what does the Bible say about the heart? It's twisted. If you follow your heart, you're going, to, you're going the wrong path. You need to follow Christ. And he will correct your heart. He'll fix your heart. He'll fix your mind. But you have to give it to him first. Um, and I want to um, reiterate that anybody that teaches just a doctrine that there is no sin, that he, God will set you for whatever you do, that's a false doctrine. Uh, yeah, he loves you, and he wants to free you from the curse of sin. Whoever Jesus sets free is free indeed. But a lot of people are just slaves to their sin. They, they find themselves, oh, they identify as this type of person. Now they can't ever leave that, that way. They, they chose that doctrine. They chose to be in that lifestyle. If you can choose to get into that lifestyle, you can choose to get out of that lifestyle. God can give you the strength to do it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And including the weapons of the mind. That's the, that's the things of the world. The, the world puts this peer pressure on people to put them in a box and keep them in that box. Um, I, I, I'm just going to call out as is the LGBT community. They have this mindset that once you have an inclination that you are. No, God can set you free from that mindset. Mm -hmm. Once again, whoever Jesus sets free is free indeed. You can't free yourself from it. God can set you free from it, though. But you have to choose to put him first. Pick up your cross and walk. Mm -hmm. We must uh, slay our own flesh on a daily basis. Um, and just because that is one sin, that's not the only sin out there. Just because I, um, I'm not uh, a part of that community doesn't mean I should not be avoiding um, sexual interactions with people that I'm not married to. If I'm not married, you're not supposed to be having sex. Straight up. But what the world tries to tell you is, it's okay. Test your eye. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Entanglements. Entanglements. <laughs> and the entanglements just leave you up in another trap. You're just tangled up. Um, I'm going to move on to verse 3. And their greed... These teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. They were commanded, commended, commendation has long hang over them. Okay. Condemnation, thank you. Um, has long hang over them, and their destruction has been sleep, uh, sleeping. Yes. So, not asleep. Um, so, these preachers, these teachers, as they teach you, they're causing their own destruction. 
and they're living the same lifestyle as Satan. Satan, his only goal is to bring more people down with him. That's his only goal. He already knows the, the games are fixed. He already knows he already failed. He can't be God. God was one that allowed him to survive in the first place. But God, out of mercy, allows us to still survive. Instead of, one person said, I'm going, jumping off the script, but I'm going to follow what God tells me to do. Going on social media, um, you find a lot of people that they'll say, if there is a God, why would he let so much destruction hit this world? Or why is there so much death? Why is there so much pain? I had to explain to them that God's not the one that caused that. Man caused that pain. When we, when Adam ate that, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, they brought sin into the world. That sin was never uh, taken out of the world. The only one that can remove that sin is when Jesus comes back but on his final say. But during this time period, it's all a test. We're supposed to be uh, living right for God. If we're not living right for him, we're living right for Satan. There's only left or right. It's right or wrong. Heaven or hell. There is no in-between, um, which um, some people like to think that uh, they can live a life of sin and still be uh, going to heaven. No. If you choose that life, you've chosen your side. If you're purposely living out sin on a daily basis, you've made your choice of what side you're going to be on. I, I, I can't help but think back to a conversation I had, and um, he was saying, if there's so much pain in this world, why wouldn't God just wipe it out? Because humans cause that pain. We have a merciful God. If you want him to wipe out that pain, he's wiping out a lot of people. Think about that. How many people have you hurt yourself? Not on purpose, or even on purpose. We all fall short sometimes, but God is merciful. He does. He's, he's just. He gives us the opportunity to give our lives back to him. And it's his mercy that we live on every day. Um, if we go to Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, if a prophet or one who foretells by dream appears among you and announces to you the signs or wonders, and if the signs or wonders spoken of takes place and the prophet says, let us follow the other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to those words, that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. And if the Lord, your God, you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep this commands and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death for inciting rebellion against the Lord and your God and your God, who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I'm just going right there. So that's the that's that's what they're getting. Those false false teachers, they will be killed. They they're going to suffer that death. And we got to make sure we're not follow them and their sects. That's that's another sign of the antichrist. Antichrist is just simply that lives anti what Christ is teaching, what he, his motivation was. God is a God of love. If you have anybody that's teaching anything but love, you better question that. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you these things warn you out of love. I'm telling you this because I don't want you to go into damnation. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I love you enough to tell you the truth. How many people um, would let their dog ride on the street and play in traffic? Nice. Exactly. <clears throat> but you love that dog enough to say no, stay out that street. Mm -hmm. You love that dog enough to keep him on a leash. That's... I, I'm fine with being on God's leash because mm -hmm. he knows what's best for me. He's guided me throughout my life. Uh, I had the mindset of not making this a long, long service, but um, I'm going to let God take his sweat. If it's long, good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 4, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but set them to hell, 
putting them in the chains of darkness and to put hell to their judgment. Um, so if God's willing to judge his own creation, correct, judge the angels, the ones that people, uh, I'm not sure why, but people want to talk to angels. I've talked to somebody recently. She's like, oh, I, I think I got an angel problem. No, trust God. We should not be praising or even talking or trying to communicate with angels whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, the last angel that tried to really communicate was Lucifer. <laughs> um, or, the, or the other angels that, um, the, the Nephilim that came and bred with the humans and caused the flood to start with. Moses would have had to build that ark. Over 120 years built an ark because some angels went rampant mm -hmm. and destroyed the world. But that's the, that's the thing. Angels, they're creatures too. They're, they're, um, they're heavenly beings. We're not meant to pray to them. We're not meant to seek them out. Um, they are creatures on a different plane of existence for a reason. We need to stay separate. I'm not sure whoever, um, there's a falsity saying that once we die, we, people, that's my, I, I have a family member that's my guardian angel. Um, that's, a, that's falsity. That's, um, we don't die and become angels. The angels are different creatures altogether. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, but yeah, um, grandma, even if she's looking down on you, she's not the one that's guiding your life. That's God. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can, we can deify people that aren't, aren't God. And that's one of the biggest sins out there. That's just another idol. When you start praying to anybody but God, you're making that person your idol. And God is a jealous God. A very jealous God. And unfortunately, you're seeking damnation if you're talking to anybody but God. Um, and we have that right to talk to God because of Jesus. Yes. His sacrifice. He is our priest. He is our, our, um, our only reason we, are holy. we can be seen as holy enough to talk to God. Without Jesus' sacrifice, we are nothing. We are dust. It takes time for any um, anybody that wants to build anything, anything worth having, takes time, takes preparation, takes knowledge. If you want to build a relationship, you need to take time and get to know that person. Um, and that's the same thing with, with God. You need to get time. Spend your time in the Bible. If you're, if you're following a ministry that doesn't encourage you to read for yourself, that's not a good ministry. Mm -hmm. You need to be reading the Bible yourself. I suggest it every day. If you can't do every day, every other day. Um, if, if you can't do every other day, just find um, something to listen to. If you can't read yourself, listen to it. There's a million different apps out there that will read the Bible to you directly. If that's not an app you like, there's podcasts. Make sure you're going by a podcast. You have to vet them. Anybody that you listen to, there's lots of false teachers out there. Um, unfortunately, there's not enough, enough vetting out there. And we live in a world that the truth isn't as the most important anymore. Mm -hmm. Look at our politics mm. on both sides. Mm. No matter what side you look at, you're going to have one line about the next and the next line about the next. And um, unfortunately, we have the issue is we have people, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So you have a lot of people that can't handle the power they've been given. Even if they start off with the right mindset, it's like, oh, just take this couple thousand dollars to get this done. Oh, this is not going to hurt anything. Oh, this is for the babies. Oh, let's get the lottery in. It's going to go to the schools. Let's, um, oh, marijuana. Let's legalize that. Think of all the tax money. That can go to the schools. Mm. <laughs> They're going to have high bus drivers. But it's true. It's, it's, they, they don't see it as an issue anymore. Uh, people that don't have Christ in their hearts, that don't follow the commandments of God, they follow the laws of the world. And they use the laws of the world to dictate what's right and wrong. And that's, that's a lot of power that we're giving to society. That's a, that's a lot of power that we, we have sacrificed to people in charge that are not fit to be in charge. Mm -hmm. We have a system where it's popularity rules and just because you're popular doesn't mean that you should have power. Mm -hmm. Crack was one of the most popular drugs out there. They gave the crack epidemic lasted forever. Then after crack was over, then the opioid addiction. And it's the pharmacies that are running it. But pharmacies are in charge of our medical care. 
That's where all the money comes from. It goes through. We give so much power to these industries, these people that do not deserve it. We need to give the power back to God. Give the power, give all the praise to God. Mm -hmm. We want to see why the world's going into damnation, why the world's getting so twisted. Why is it? Because we're taking, we're taking God out of everything. Mm -hmm. um, we feel guilty for saying God's name since I'm in public. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it louder now. I felt convicted because I, I I started to apologize for teaching about Christ accidentally. And then God convicted me saying, why are you apologizing? I'm sorry that I felt sorry now. I should be proud to speak in God's name. And all that we do, no matter where we are. If somebody's offended, I'm offended by them cussing. I'm offended by what you're wearing. I'm offended by what you talk about on a regular basis. If you can, if you say God, GD all the time, I'm going to say God bless every day. I'm blessed God in every way I can because he's blessed me. The only reason I'm able to walk today Amen. is because of God. The reason I'm able to talk today is because of God. My parents told, were told that you'd never be able to understand a word I say. Now I'm talking for God. I'm his vessel. I rededicate my whole life to him. <clears throat> I'm read, um, starting at verse 5. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ash and made them examples of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot and a righteous man who was distressed by the depravity of conduct and this, this is this is once again like a, we can go back to the book of Revelation. We can go all the way to the end of the book with this. Um, this is just a reminder that God will keep safe his, his people of salvation. His chosen people, he will keep them in any situation, no matter what's going on around you. If you're not feeling grieved by what's going on around you, you got to ask yourself, are you really connected to God? If you're not feeling that this world, you can feel the direction of the world. If you, if you can't feel what's going on, ask for um, spiritual discernment. No, we shouldn't be talking to celestial beings. We should be talking directly to God. God, please give me the eyesight. Give me your eyesight. Give me your view of what's going on, Lord. Let me walk in the way that you want me to walk. We should, that's the prayer that we should always be praying. When I go to work every day, I, I make the same prayer. Lord, allow me to um, talk to somebody that's going to talk to somebody about you and help them draw closer to you in the best way. And I'm in sales, so let me help make some money at the same time. It's not, I'm not trying to be selfish with it. I still got to pay my bills, so I got to pay my tithes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we should be praying to see God's goals among, before our own. And God's goal is to bring, bring more people unto him. The heavens rejoice with every soul that's saved. We're going to make it a whole entirety every day. Everybody we talk to, everybody we come in contact with, they should be able to feel that love through our lives. They should be able to feel that, that guidance through us. They should be able to feel that, that inkling of this is not a normal person. This is not another another person just walking on the street. They should be able to feel that Christ is in you. If they don't, we got more work to do. If they don't have that discernment, they have more work to do too. I'm going to jump down to verse 9. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of, of judgment. Mm. I can't say thank you enough, Lord. Please see me, see, please free me from anything that's not of you, Lord. Save me from your from the judgment. Make sure I'm not a part of the unjust. 
Help me to draw more people to your side, Lord, in all that I do. You set us apart for a reason, Lord. Some people call it lonely. I call it um, preparation. I, I had to separate myself from a lot of people over the last couple of years because they weren't going the same direction that I was planning on going. They weren't going the same direction God had for me, is having for me. I'm still going through God's plan. I'm just living it out. But we, we're called to be different for a reason. If you're not different, how, how can you ever say you're a child of God? If you're acting just like the world, if you're acting just in, in the same manner, uh, same mindset, same vulgarities, how can they tell you apart from any other person? Make sure you, you're, you're setting yourself aside for him to use on a regular basis. I have a few things that um, things I'm going to close out with. Um, the red flags of a, a false prophet, a false teacher. <clears throat> Number one, they deny God's inspired their entire Bible. Anybody that um, is teaching you or preaching to you and says, oh, this part you can ignore. No, the whole Bible comes from God. Old Testament, New Testament, and everything in between. It is inspired by God. Two, they deny that all have sinned and are in need of salvation. They will not call you to repent. Anybody that just accepts you for whatever sin you do, that's not a, a good teacher. That's a false teacher. Because God is made to set you free from the, the, sin, the, the curse of sin. They deny the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. If any of them deny that, they miss the whole well, they miss the whole point of the Bible. If they deny that God was God, he came to earth, lived, died, and rose again for us. Killing the curse of death for us, they miss the whole point of the Bible. They did not, uh, four, salvation of works and not by faith. So anybody that's teaching that you have to work for your salvation is a false. It's, it's by faith and faith alone that you are saved. If you have faith in God, the real God, the living God, the one that died for us and rose again for us, that's how you know that you are saved. It's by faith alone. So number five. They deny there's a literal hell. A lick of fire. Anybody that tells you there is no hell, that's a false. False teacher. False prophet. Six, they deny the deity of Jesus Christ. That Jesus is Lord. Anybody that denies God, Jesus as Lord and Savior, is a false prophet. That includes all, all the other isms. All the, yeah, you, I don't know. <laughs> It's a laundry list of those. Um, and seven, they deny you the entirety of the whole counsel of God. They're saying that God doesn't speak. Um, I had a young lady yesterday I talked to. She said that she talked to a minister years um, that at her previous church before she moved out here in Maryland. And he told her that God doesn't speak to us anymore. That's how you know you gotta check your connection because he talks to me on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. If you're not hearing his voice, are you really Christian? It says in the Bible, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. If you don't hear his voice, you're not his sheep. You're not one of his one of his chosen ones. And I was I couldn't help but feel pain for her because she she lost communication with the church because of a false teacher. Uh, she has said that her mother heard the voice of God telling her to do different things, and that's who guided her into church. But then that minister told her that we're not allowed to hear God's voice, and that threw her for a complete spin. But my mom always heard. If she doesn't believe, how can I believe? I actually invited her to church today. I was a little upset that she didn't show. But um, I, I pray that she sees this online. God does see you. God does hear you. And if you, if you eliminate the distractions of the world, 
you'll be able to hear his voice. A lot of times you don't hear his voice because we keep all the things, all the bells and whistles, the games, the fast cars, um, the football game, whatever it is, all your distractions is distracting from God. If you're not spending that time in stillness, in your prayer closet, isolate yourself. You will hear his voice. You will be close to him. I had a little bit more, um, I'm just going to read on. Traditionally, a heretic is someone who has compressed uh, a central doctrine that lost sight of God. So we got to make sure we're not following the heretics, the people that are making uh, their own doctrine. Say, oh, yeah, I believe some of the Bible. I pick and choose pieces. I like this, but I don't like that. Yeah, God loves me, but he also loves that I can... I, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. No, God says that He wants to free you in His way. He wants you to be free to live out His will, not your own will. If we follow our own heart, we're just following our, our own heart to hell, the twistedness. Galatians, um, Galatians goes on, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 10. I'm astonished that you are so quick to. Desert, quick, quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to different gospels, which is really no gospel at all. Mm-hmm. Evidently, some, of pe- some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to prevent the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel, or anything other than one that's preached to you, let them be under a curse. I end it right there. They are under a curse if they teach a false doctrine. If anybody teaches you anything but God, faith in God, and faith in Jesus and Jesus alone, that is a, faith, a false doctrine. I want everybody close to Christ. That's my only goal in life at this point anymore. Um, I'm open to, uh, I'm going to ask my father to give a closing prayer. Let's give God praise. Amen. For a well thought out message. Um, we started to take notes earlier. But they gave like seven signs that we can tell, and I think it's important. I did get like four or five, I'll get them from you later. Okay. <laughs> I got the nine the Lord, I got the nine the whole council, and then we can talk about a heretic. So, um, denying hell. And these are basic things, but I think they're important for us to understand as children of God when you know when someone's telling you the truth. They mentioned um, the young uh, lady who uh, was told, and I understand what she's being told it was not meant to discourage her, meant to guard her, because um, when you pray, you talk to God, and when God talks to you, it's through the word. You have to be careful. The other voices you hear not from God. So you need something to compare that I understood he was trying to say to her. I'm just sorry that she wasn't further counseled. Uh, because God, uh, I've never heard an audible voice, but I've gotten leading by God. Um, and those are the kind of things they have to distinguish between. You know, when God is leading us in our own personal life, as opposed to God's audible voice in our ears, you know. So, I feel sorry. Also, um, I want to share a testimony uh, in closing. But I thank God today for uh, the word of God and the warning God gives to us. How we got to hide God's word in our hearts and we won't sin against him. So we thank God for the message and the messenger. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. And, um, this morning at the Sunday School was a great Sunday School. Please uh, go back and look at the Sunday School this morning. Pastor uh, Thornton from New Fellowship uh, spoke to us in a powerful way about the gifts um, of the of the spirit and how each of us are valued and I just to refresh the how I try to pour into each one of you that everybody is valued everybody is equally valued at kingdom praise ministry amen, amen. everybody is important there's no special amen. seats important people everybody's important because everybody is gifted and called by God to do something amen. and every part is important so go back and look at that and also after the after the um, uh, message was over uh, Deacon Miller called me and told me about one of the ladies in the, I teach a Baltimore School of Bible Club. I, <laughs> I teach a Baltimore School of Bible. 
and one of my students is going through a lot, has cancer, and uh, she was in remission, and then the cancer came back, and the doctors told her she needed to get nuclear, have nuclear treatment, so she couldn't be around anybody. She, she, he didn't want her to do it at home, and the hospital didn't have space for it. Mm-hmm. So he recommended she go to a hotel room for a week and take these treatments. So he advised her, Dick Miller advised her to call her insurance company to see if they were saying. And the insurance company said, we will pay for you to get the room. But, and then the hospital called and say, we do have space for you. Mm-hmm. All right, answer Amen. prayer. Amen. And that good news, give God Amen. praise. Amen. Guess what he gets better. Y'all ready for this? Mm-hmm. She goes to the doctor to examine her for this test. And they can't find the answer. Wow. No, come on, y'all. Maybe y'all, 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 y'all can get it. So the doctors were perplexed to place it, retest her. They're puzzled because this kind of cancer doesn't just go away. They cannot find the cancer. They said, we don't know what happened, but she said, I know what happened. Amen. Can y'all imagine how this woman, she's Amen. on her back. she got a lot of issues going on. But to have all the issues going on, and here you got the cancer coming back, had to be discouraged. But yet... She's a woman of God, and God has done miracles. I want to encourage you today. Amen. After hearing that, I was reminded that now what I'm going through, it ain't too hard for God. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Amen. No matter what I'm going through, it is not too hard for God to handle my... Amen. I want to tell you that are listening here and those who are watching us, doesn't matter what you're going through, God is greater than your circumstance. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Sometimes we forget who is serving? Amen. But how do you know he's able? Yes, he is. He's able. And some of you, we're sitting right now, some of us are scared because something happened right now. How many times has God brought you through something? Yeah. Yeah. So we got to remember, draw back on those experiences. No, I'm going through this right now, but you know what? My God is able. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes, he is. Yeah. The Bible says able to do it singly, yeah. abundantly, yeah. above all we can ask yeah. or think. What does that mean? He and I bless our requests. I'm down here praying for this thing, but God got a whole another big thing over here. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm thinking small. I'm thinking small. The Lord just said to me, God said, I got something so much greater for you. You want room in the hospital? I'm making so you ain't got to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage, I was encouraged by it. And I want you to be encouraged this morning, no matter what you're going through, God is able. Amen. Amen. So we thank God this morning for the message, the messenger. We thank God for those who are with us in, in person who uh, fall their way through the rain. Amen. Amen. Come out and be with Amen. us in person. For those who are watching us, Amen. Uh, for those who are Bedside Baptists, we thank you for Bedside Baptist people mm-hmm. because we, we give glory to God that this message is able to go out all over the world, literally, Amen. all over the world to help other people by way of social media. So we thank God and let me get to my closing prayer. And then we'll <laughs> Father, we're so grateful for this time. Together, we're grateful for the Word of God, for the warning you give us in the Word of God, for the, the the points that were given this morning for us to watch and to know whether someone's speaking to us truly or not. We, we need a measure. We don't have everything we need. We need some way to compare what they're saying. We thank you for the word of God, and we thank you for the anointing, the spirit of God who is in us to guide our lives. So we present all things to you. We ask, oh God, that somebody will be saved and touched by, by way of this message and by the way, not only this message, but for all the messengers and messengers that will go forth from your pulpit today, that someone will come to know you as Savior and Lord. God, we ask that you would multiply your, grow your family, God, for your kingdom. Let people come to know you as Savior and Lord and really get a hold to the gospel. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And also, he also want to make sure before we leave that we offer Christ. Anyone in San Marcos does not know Christ. You don't want to be part. I, I mean, God is good, but God also got a judgment. Mm-hmm. I do not want to be on the other side. When he stepped he- heavy, I do not want to be on his bad side. So come on over to the good side. Amen. Amen. Give your life to Christ. Let Christ take control of your life. Amen. Amen. I'm not telling you you won't have problems or situations or whatever. I'm telling you, you have a problem solved will live with you. Walk with you all through the fire, through the storms you go through. He'll walk Amen. with you. Be a strength. I offer Christ to you today. Give your life to Christ. Right where you're sitting, right where you're standing, wherever you are in your cars, wherever you're listening to this message. Take a moment right now. Just, just, just as you breathe, you can breathe with praise. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And save me. I repent of my sins. I now want you as Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You pray that prayer from your heart. 
Get yourself in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church so you can grow in your faith. Amen. God bless you, family. We thank God for each one of you. Please govern yourself according to the announcements. This is Kingdom Praise Ministry. We're now signing out. Amen. Amen. Amen.